Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and rejoice, Godot developers, because Godot 4.1 is here. Now, we're just going to jump right in and take a look at some of the neat new features in this release. You're going to find 4.0 was probably like the massive release. 4.1 is more of things that didn't make 4.0 and things paving the way for the future of Godot. But there's a lot to like here, and we're going to start things off with the project launcher. One thing you're going to notice going on over here is some of these guys have tags. Yes, there is now a new tag system available. You can click the tag and filter down to just the things that have that particular tag, click it again to unfilter you can notice here you could have multiple tags on something in terms of creating a tag so let's get rid of all of the tags here go to manage tags like so and you can create a new one right here so we want to create a brand new tag over here there's a couple rules it cannot obviously be empty you cannot use capital letters and you cannot use spaces what you can do though is create a tag like this underscore tag like so, and it'll automatically capitalize it and automatically add the space in. And now you can add that tag in, it automatically adds it to that particular project, and click OK. So now you'll see it has this tag, this guy, we could come down here, and we can say, OK, add in this tag, and really stupid to this guy over here, and boom, there you go. Obviously, you could get rid of tags as well, so we could grab this guy right here, manage the tags on it, and get rid of that tag. Another thing you can do here is also sort by things that have tags or do not have tags, and that's kind of it. It's actually a nice little addition especially if you have a lot of Godot projects on the go. Uh, with that covered, let's head into Godot itself. Now what you see here, this is the classic uh, Lumberyard Bistro scene. I think this is an excellent scene. It was converted by a fellow to work with the Godot 4. I think it makes the engine look great. Uh, but now let's jump in and take a look at a couple of the new features here. Now one of the first things we've got is a new feature for the editor, and this is huge. So what I'm going to do is go here, add a script to this guy, because there's actually no scripts in the scene. Okay, like so. And what you're going to notice now with any of the text editors, you can now actually break away the window. So this applies to both the, the uh, um, code editor as well as documentation view. So if you're in the help like so, uh, that will also break away. So you can bring it over here and what I could now do is if I had multiple monitors, I could float this off to a different monitor or I could do something like this where I'll have Godot over here and a dedicated code editor over here. Now what I do wish is that this ultimately had um, the documentation as a separate window at this point so I could have documentation floating in one window, code editor floating somewhere else, etc. Um, unfortunately, that is not the case. Now one of things I do find a little funky about this. It's actually quite nice. So if I want to go uh, full screen this guy, I can. So you can have it off on another screen, do your editing for your code, etc. I really do like this functionality. I do wish there was a nice, simple way to like dock it back in. Right now, all you do basically is close it down and then your script editor is embedded once again in the Godot game engine. But the, the ability to break away the documentation and the code editor into separate windows, that is a huge time saver and a convenience thing for me. I love this new feature. Uh, and I think it's, again, it'd be nice if you could have documentation in a separate window as well. I don't know if there is a way to do that, but again, nice new functionality there. Now, there is another new feature in Godot. I don't know if I recommend you using it yet because the Godot team definitely do not, but you can pick something in your scene. Uh, so you grab like this guy right over here. And what you're going to notice here is any node that you've got selected, you now have this new option down here called thread groups. And what it allows you to do is actually you can set uh, to have a uh, each object in its own separate thread. So you can actually uh, really take advantage of multi-threading in the Godot 4 game engine when it comes to scenes and scene hierarchies. On the topic of scene hierarchies, I actually did um, some improvements there as well. They've, they've changed the algorithm that was used for how scenes are organized. It is now a hash map, I believe. We'll get to that when we get to the release notes in just a minute. But that is definitely another nice new feature. But we do now have tentative support here for multi-threads. It's still considered experimental, but you can now have threading within your Godot scenes, which should give you a performance uh, hike as you know we're moving more towards multi-threaded CPUs in the future. Now another thing we can do and I'm going to quickly create uh, a particle system here so I'll pause. Okay here we go so we got this super simple particle system in here GPU uh, particles you can see right here I accidentally parented it to the wrong thing but that shouldn't matter much. So again particle system right here. Uh, one of the new things that they've done is they've rewritten the uh, turbulent system for your particle. So we come back over here and then we'll go to our uh, process material here, right here. And what you're going to notice now is the turbulence over here. So this has been completely rewritten. Uh, you've got a lot more control over. So you can see how the turbulence is sending you off into a various different directions here. So you have control over uh, the, how it's applied, how it's going to work, variable values here, initial, what is that actually? Let me expand this out so we can actually displacement min, which is making my particle system very weird. Uh, 
displacement max, and so on. So if you've got turbulence here, you now have this neat new functionality there. So this was all completely rewritten. Another area that we've got here that has been rewritten, so I'll, I'll stick with putting the wrong thing here. Uh, we've also got this new texture 3D, which can be used for things such as a tractor field. So let me just get this guy so it's actually in the same general area as our other particle system. So let's bring this over here, bring this over here, and over here. All right, we should be close enough. So now our particles can interact. What we can actually do now, and this is the new functionality, so this guy selected, I can now select a texture here, and we have this new noise texture 3D. So we go ahead and create a new noise texture 3D. Uh, so let's create a new noise on it, new fast line noise, and so on. And we can use this as the attractor field in here. You can also use these noise texture 3Ds for setting the uh, density of fog, as an example. And now we can actually control how that attractor is going to feel. So uh, one value will pull things in, the other one will push it away. The directionality is available here. But now this can all be controlled via this nice, neat new noise texture here. Uh, and yeah, so again, this noise texture, this noise texture 3D can also be used again for volumetric fog, uh, for making fog that has a variable depth and thickness to it. And now let's just jump in and take a look at the release notes. All right, so here we go. So it's been four months since the release of Godot 4 back in March. 4.1 is here, an update focused on stability, performance, and polish. Now, I'm not getting into, like, there's literally been hundreds of, like, fixes and patches and that kind of stuff here as well. Uh, but we also get a number of new uh, feature improvements. So one of the big areas here is in performance. A lot of the stuff you can't actually see. The one thing we mentioned earlier on is they did switch to a new algorithm there. Uh, so uh, nodes... Uh, are using a fast hash map to make adding and removing child nodes several times faster. So when you add nodes into and out of the scenes, it will uh, be a faster performance. The problem is, of course, there is a cost here. So uncommon node operations are slightly slower, and the memory footprint of the base node class is about 10% bigger. So it's going to take up a little bit more memory. But in the majority of cases, that trade-off should be worth it, and we should just see better performance adding and subtracting nodes from the world, something you do all the time. We also, again, have that new experimental multi-threading. This was literally just added by adding a new property to the node node, which I know sounds weird, uh, that definitely is going to have some issues with it. It's going to be interesting to see how that ultimately works out, but that is neat new functionality there. Also have some improvements around multi-threading in general. Another nice one here is, again, shader um, shader stalls are just a thing when you're working with Vulkan. There is now a new shader cache. This joins the Uber shader for getting shaders up and going faster. This should hopefully minimize the number of uh, cache slowdowns you get. Still going to happen a little bit, but it should be better going forward. Um, um, at the core, we've definitely had an interesting one. The world has basically been swapped inside out. So the front and back camera directions were swapped in the editor, and now you can specify in the look at which way you want it to work. This actually fixed a longstanding bug with path following and also makes it so when you import models in, they shouldn't be facing the wrong direction. GD Script got some new love. Now, the biggest thing here is this guy right here. There is now a new uh, static keyword. Static is basically, you can think of it as a global at a class level that all classes classes have access to. So it's kind of instead of having to do where you would often have to do hacks, auto loads, global variable type things, this keeps it at the class scope. But every single instance of that class has the same value in that static. It, it opens up a world of um, design opportunities for you. A very cool addition there for sure. Uh, some changes to how enums work. You can also now uh, use typed arrays directly inside the editor, which is quite cool. C Sharp has gotten some improvements, mostly about bringing it up to par with GD script. But perhaps the biggest new feature for C Sharp is the addition of the global class. It enables you to create a global class name like you would using uh, GD Script, used using C Sharp instead. Uh, GD Extension continues to mature. This is going to be a replacement for GD Native. Uh, it's still considered beta at this point in time, but it is getting there. The cool thing is it now has the ability to both implement uh, visual shader nodes and create editor plugins using GD Extensions. There's also a backward compatibility system, so it should make future extensions you know, more future-proof which is cool. Uh, as we mentioned with the editor earlier on, you can now float out uh, various different windows, specifically the script and documentation window. Uh, the editor will also now keep track of your window layouts. So when you log back into the editor, it should carry off where you last were, which should give you a nice persistence there. Uh, Godot 4 introduced the option to define and export typed arrays. I mentioned that briefly earlier on in the other category. And as we saw earlier on, the project manager now allows you to assign those tags and filter by them, which is a 
nice addition. On the rendering side of things, we talked about a couple of these. There is the new 3D noise texture, which you can use for volumetric fog density, as well as in attractor vector fields uh, with particle systems. Also, again, you have that new particle turbulence rework gives you a lot more fine-tuned control over the turbulence of your particle systems. And on the AI side, finally, we have a completely uh, new rewrite of the avoidance algorithm. Uh, avoidance can now happen in both 2D and 3D. This allows flying agents to move over those walking on the ground. Uh, on top of that, you can now use layers to control which agents avoid which and assign priorities to have some agents push others away. So uh, nice improvements across the board. Let me know what you think of Godot 4.1 in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.